When the church sees us to worry about their public interest, no, their public image, or what we call our brand today, and give ourselves over to God's priorities, the public image will take care of itself. The early, the early church understood the distinction between means and ends and processes and the purposes. God blessed them because they were more interested in his priorities than their own mechanics. But the second thing, that the second, the second, the second thing, the reason that God blesses the church is, is a church where the members trust each other. Can y'all give me about 10 more minutes? A church that God blesses is a church where the members trust each other. The Bible says all the believers were together and had everything in common. Now, I don't understand how they shared their goods, but I do understand that they absolutely trusted one another. Can I get a witness in here? Verse 4 6 says, So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. They could do this because they trusted one another. The fruit of the Spirit was evidence. They loved being with each other because they trusted one another. They wanted to be with one another. We have people in the church that don't even like one another. Don't even want to be with I see you coming down one aisle, I go down the other aisle. Yeah, we're supposed to be, oh, talk to we're supposed to be brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. How many churches that do not enjoy the blessings of God because their members don't trust one another? People gossip about each other. They lie on one another. They mistreat one another. I wish I had a witness in here. They talk one another. They don't like one another. God can't bless that kind of behavior. And they continue. You teach it. Fellowship. I wish that would be the apostles doctrine. Here's what Jesus says. Here's your badge of identification. Not how much you shot, not how much you run. He says, I'm going to give you a badge of identification. He says, if you want the world to know that you are my disciples, it's not all these hollow and all of that kind of stuff. I, in fact, I, I don't have a problem with none of that. It's not shouting, it's not, it's not running. It's if you love one another. He says, if you want the world to know that you are my disciples, love one another. Here's what God has done in our life. God has, God has sovereignly chosen that He will bless only those people who live in the spirit of mutual, mutual trust and confidence in each other. That's says good. They trust it. Trust it. That song that I need you to survive. Yeah. I need you. You need me. We all are God's family. What else is it? Stand with me. What? Stand with me. Agree with me. Agree with me. We all are. It is his will that in me be supplied. You are important. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Right there. Can you get a witness in here? I'm going to tell you what else he 
say it, but he to do it. It's not a church song, but he did say, everybody needs somebody to love. And then he said, I need you, 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 you. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> but we're going to finish. It says, church that, where the members trust one another. Then thirdly, a church, once all of that happens, it will be a church that enjoys daily growth. Yeah. Yeah. It says, praising God and having favor with all the people. There was no complaining, there was no criticizing, there was no envy, there was no strife. It's no wonder uh, you, you see what you see in the, in the B-clause of verse 47. And the Lord added to that number daily those who were being saved. Listen to me. The only numbers that really count are the members that God has. Amen. He's not impressed about how many bodies may be in the building on Sunday. You know, unless they're saved and in line with his priorities. We don't want to impress with all of that. We don't want to talk about, man, I, man, we were packed up when we was packed up in there. And then, you know, you packed up in the house, you packed up in church, and then three quarters of the people in there don't even know the Lord. They walk out and won't even get it. There's no help in here. You got a house full of people. And only 20% of the ones who support the church. Good God Almighty. God ain't impressed with all these numbers. I'd rather really have 300 people who really faithfully love God than to have 3,000 that you just carry on the books. Someone said 40% of all the membership, 40% of the average membership of the average church can be dropped from the roll and there will be no notice what you would even no, notice. No. 40% of the average church, 40% of the average church congregation to be dropped from the road. And, and, and you wouldn't even notice it. Because it would have no impact upon the church. Amen. God says, I'm not concerned. Sure you want to see the church full. Sure you want to see it because God is concerned about numbers. That's when you, that's when you have a book of numbers. But God is concerned about numbers because that's when you see these numbers in the Bible. But God wants holy numbers. God wants people that can be trusted. God wants people in the house of God that love him. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Well, it's time to stop trying to be what everybody wants us to be. And it's time to become the church that pleases God. It's time to get back into the word or get into the word. Not you all, but it's time for your cousins and some of these other churches to get back into the word. It's, it's time to worship God in spirit and in truth. It's time, it's time to be in real fellowship with one another where there are no cliques. Just people loving one another, caring for one another. It's time to get serious about worship. It's time to make God's priorities our priorities. And when we do, God will bless the church beyond our wildest dreams. He will bless your going out and he will bless your coming in. He will bless the works of your hands. The Lord will give you favor. He'll give you favor with corporate, corporate America. He'll give you favor with people in this community. He'll give you favor. And that's the kind of church that I want to be a part of. I want to be a part of a church that God blesses. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The songwriter says you can be a great cathedral, large or small. You can be a skyscraper, grand and tall. You can conquer all your failures of the past, but only what you do for Christ. Remember that. Yeah. Remember only what you do for Christ 
will ask only what you do for him yeah. Yeah. will be counted yeah. in the end. Yeah. Only what you do for Christ will ask. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you. I just want to be a part of the church. And God bless you. If that's what you want to be, give God a great hand.